So Daniel, Tracy said you wanted to come in and, and speak. It's something I've been wanting to do, obviously, being a mental health ambassador. Yeah. It's something I've suffered with myself without being diagnosed as such. It's something that runs in my family, and obviously I just wanted to ask you about what you're struggling with or what you're getting help with and, and things like that, just so people can understand it. Yeah, sure. So, that's a good question. Um, I sort of struggle with um, psychosis, so if, no one, if anyone knows what that is, so it's when you hear things and see things that aren't there and believe things that aren't true. So I have to kind of put up with uh, chronic insomnia, psychosis and sleep hallucinations. Insom sorry, it's quite, insomnia is when you can't, you can't sleep? Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. So I, sort of, there's an, a lot of things that I can do to overcome that, such as like taking medication and um, there's like a lot of ways that you can shift your mindset around being like a fixed mindset to a growth mindset which is when you sort of think that you can do things and you can grow rather than you can't. Have being negative yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah because it's something that I've, I've heard of obviously but I have no understanding of. But I guess it's just another one of those things where to shed light on it, there may be people out there listening or watching this that are not, can obviously listen and, yeah. or one of their family members. Because that's how I kind of, I'll be honest, I didn't really know much about mental health growing up. And obviously when I lived with my mum, then I left there. And as I got older, I kind of, different behaviours and things that we went through, you kind of just, you just get used to them when really, it's something that we should all learn more about and then we can actually help that person. And it's, it shouldn't be such an, you know, not frowned upon. I think certain people dating back, it's hard for them to accept that, you know, it's just like, if you hurt your leg, you're not gonna go out and play. It's something we deal with, but I think you're saying psychosis itself. I don't think we haven't heard much in football, but this is more what I'm trying to do here with the help of Tracy and the others is, it doesn't have to be just about football. It's Charlton as a football club, as a community. So, now thanks for coming anyway. <laughs> just um, in terms of, when did it first come about, if you don't mind me asking, when did you, you know, start experiencing yeah, so, these things? Um, I love what you said because it definitely is true that like physical illness and mental illness are the same. Like you should treat them as like mental illness should be treated as physical illness when it comes to being treated and being diagnosed and everything like that because a lot of people see it as kind of making themselves vulnerable and like with the, with the stigma that comes with it and everything. And I think we just need to break that because it is like something in your brain. It's a physical health problem. I was 22 when I started experiencing it. It started off as menstrual insomnia. Um, so it's only like once every month I used to have insomnia. But then I also got different symptoms that come with it. So I had like things, it was like p things were talking to me and telling me to do things like the TV and stuff. Um, and then it turned into like a full psychosis like and I thought people were going to kill me and stuff and then I experienced sleep hallucinations and then from then it's just been like chronic insomnia. Okay so it's difficult I don't want to go through all the, the tough times because someone asked me about my tough times I can, I can actually touch on them but it's more so what were the first steps you took? Do you wish you took steps earlier? Yeah. How did your family support you or was it outside help, not so much your family? Yeah, so my family were really supportive. Um, I got the help that I needed at the time from my work and they referred me to the doctors and everything. And um, yeah, they're just amazing. And then I got referred to the team, the in intervention team, and we started doing these um, art classes online and, and all these activities with this is Charlton, Charlton Trust. Charlton's intervention yeah, team. Charlton oh. Trust and it just helped so much with getting back into normality and yeah I thought it was amazing. No, that's good. So it's almost just like taking your mind off it, feeling yeah. good. That's it because I know it's like sometimes if you just by yourself especially you start thinking about it more so almost you're doubling down on the problem itself and problem might not be the right word that's how I use that's how I use to see it but it's not it's, it's who you are if everyone knows that I think the more open you are is what I've found especially being alone is that once people know your traits and, and how you are and what you're kind of going through they're actually they're more comfortable around you you know they know how to behave 
not behave as the like, wrong word, but just to kind of act and be, and, and they're a little bit more lax. And sometimes they're more, they're not on edge. I think if people are on edge, it may obviously put you on edge. I don't know, you tell me, but I just think it's good to be open. Yeah, just it. to open, open the conversation people, people around it. People understand you more, that's it. Yeah. But um, if you don't mind, because the intervention thing is, is something that's obviously we're proud of here and this, I think more people should know about it. I think what people are involved and what else do they do and, and can anyone go to it? Is it an age group thing? Yeah, so anyone can go along. It's when you're under the care of the intervention team, they give you the, the opportunity to be involved with a lot of activities and it is so good just to have to have that sense, you can lean on the community and it's like that sense of you're not alone in this and it's everything that you're doing is you're being supported, you're being able to go out and do things that you weren't able to do before and that can get you meeting new people and it's just lovely really. No, that's brilliant. What about you, what has the Cholton Trust? Yeah, it's something I'm always, I wanted to to be involved in, like I said, because as I've got older throughout football, I was just so focused on and, and put so much pressure on myself to, you know, make it as such a football. And then the, the way the way my story went was, without boring you football-wise, was I've been on so many loans and had so many injuries that those two coincided, if you will. So I'd be away on my own in hotels or one-bedroom flats down in Yeovil, up at Dundee, and just as I got older, I didn't really have much of a life. And then I was basically just living for the football, and if I got injured, it would take me to a real low place. So, yeah, being here and helping out with the trust, I just love doing it anyway, because I've, I've been through things myself, but it also helps me, I feel like a better person. So there's a little bit of a selfish side to it, but I know I'm a good person, I've done things in the past that I shouldn't have done. But at the end of the day, I just want to give a little bit back. And once you, like I said, I do the upbeat stuff. They're brilliant people. I love doing that. So I put myself forward for this, but I'd love to um, get down and, and see how the intervention stuff is. So I don't know if you'd yeah. have me down there, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we'll figure there. something yeah, out. Yeah, 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 no, that's it. But no, yeah. the, the football club as a whole, I love it. It's, it's, one, it's good being back home and back this way. And two, it's just like you would have experienced, it's good people. And it's not, it's not just about a Saturday. I mean, we look forward to a Saturday, but I think that's the kind of the end process of, of yeah. the football club. So it's the main thing that you enjoy it, really. Yeah, no, that's it. Hey, listen, you want you want to enjoy what you do. Not everyone's as, as lucky as I am to enjoy what they do, but um, if we can help people along the way, especially young people, and I've just got a keen interest, and I think that comes from my family background and what I've been through in mental health itself, and it shouldn't be a stigma. I've actually, I've actually always been quite, I don't know where, I don't know where it comes from, quite open with it. And at first, when I was quite open with it, I think a few people were shocked because I'm quite loud. As you can tell, I can talk to anyone, talk about anything. And I'm seen as aggressive, I don't know why I am big, but <laughs> no, but um, yeah, and I'll just be open about it. And then people was like, whoa, what do you mean? Like, I just couldn't believe I was saying it. So, no, I was happy when you said you'd come here and have a chat, and I know sometimes with the cameras and stuff, but that's more to help other people, so I appreciate yeah. you coming and, and, and talking about what you're dealing with. Yeah, that's Definitely cool. Good. That's it. Is there, um, is there anything else you'd like to do with Charlton? You're obviously just doing the art, is it the art stuff you're doing? Yeah, I love doing the art stuff. Um, I'm actually, I'm doing an exhibition at Blue Water at the minute, um, with, it's called Under the Rainbow events they're hosting it and it's the main way that i actually got into my art was through the charlton trust art activities okay. and stuff and that got me back into drawing and everything and i think it's just really cool that that, that got me back into doing what i love which is drawing so yeah <laughs> so is it i'm i can only art there's loads of different art the thing is with art you can do whatever you want to do you can make it whatever you want to make it and it's, you can ultimately just express yourself and what you feel. And it's really interesting because when you draw and when you're feeling a certain way, you can see that through the art. And that's what I love about it because you can sort of like use it to, as a kind of like a journaling thing. And it's really like therapeutic when you do that and it sort of gets it out. So if you're like experiencing trauma or something, it's so interesting to just do some art and then you're like, oh, actually, I, I really feel a bit better now. Just I've got all of that out. Kind of thing. Do you know the piece you're doing at Blue Water today? Oh, yeah, yeah. 
So how long did that take? Did you do that while she was at Charlton or is it something you took home and no, worked on? No, it's something on? after we did all the art activities with Charlton. That's oh, what, really something I did in my... Passion yeah. For it. Okay, yeah, I got you, I got yeah. you. Yeah, it's amazing because art is actually scientifically proven to prevent illness and mental health problems. And um, yeah, so I'm sort of promoting that through my academy that I've been creating and everything. And I just want to share that really with people that they can, like, there's ways that you can heal yourself and commit to healing yourself, not just through medication. It's like you can do it with creative things. Like with the football, like, what ways does football help you with your well being? I think it's one, I love it, I've always loved it, but obviously the physical side of it. So if, if there's some sort of output, like it could be gym, but obviously I'll do football and do the gym, I'll feel much better. Yeah. I also love the interaction side of it. So you meet a lot of people, I'm quite bubbly, I'm chatting away. So yeah, like I said before, it was the only, the only side I struggled before with was being isolated, being alone, going away to different places where I didn't know people and then having to retreat back to the hotel or such. So but, how, how would you like overcome that? that feeling of isolation? I think it's just, it's just in my case, in terms of like, if I'm trying to help other like sportsmen or footballers, I think you still love it as much as I did, still have that passion, but you still, you still need to have what you are as a person away from football. I think you need to set up, obviously, networks, people, so you may not be blessed with a large family, but you need to just stay in contact with people. And I think, just keep yourself busy. So like you were saying, you know, you're setting up your academy, you're doing your art. These are things taking your mind off it. Essentially, if you just isolate yourself with the one thing that can bring you so much joy, but can also bring you so much pain, it just, it's almost like a, a constant cycle. So now for me at the minute, obviously I've got my relationships at football, but then when I come away from that, a good friend of mine's a little bit older, he's got his kids, so I like to take the kids out take the dogs out That's nice. so before you know it I'm at home and then I, you know I'll watch one program I'll go to bed and then I'm going back to football but I haven't thought about football for yay long if that makes any sense but I used to take it home with me because I had nothing else in my life so essentially over time I've almost like devalued myself as a person and not give that enough time and care and just focused on me as a player which is ludicrous I think now when I look back at it and then now I've prioritised myself as a person and how I feel I took a break out of football wasn't sure if I was going to come back but when I come back my outlook was different when I'm on the pitch and when I'm training my output's the same I work if not harder but that's because I found a love for it again because it does mean a lot to me and I also felt a lot better about myself and who I was as a person I'm not just I think, I think it happens to a lot of players like so when I grew up I was you know I was I've done really well I played for England and stuff and then I didn't quite reach that level anymore and I was always known as the football player and I got so hell-bent on being the football player that I wasn't valued as a person so I kind of worked on that which I think everyone should do because so few make it if there is any young players listening and I think that just gives you the platform to one, express who you are on the pitch, which is always good because everyone's different. And two, um, I actually, I feel like I play better and I can perform better. My body actually physically is one thing I found it. My mental well-being has such a bearing on how I feel physically, basically, which is something I've just learned over time. I'm 26 now. And if I knew that at 18, 19, I may not have had as many injuries as I've had, but here we are. I heard that you have an injury at the moment. I do, I do, I do. But yeah. everyone checks in on me because I've been through what I've been through, but I've actually, probably the best I've ever felt. It sounds crazy, but I'm in a really good routine at the minute. And it's just about, you know how it can be, you know, you're up and down, up and down. I'm just trying to stick to that as much as possible. I'm up early, I'm, I'm going down with David Lloyd. I'm, I used to, when I get down a bit, I'll sleep more and more and more and you get less things done and then, you know, you feel bad about yourself. But yeah, so I'm just doing that at the minute and, and trying to be positive around the boys and stuff. But like I said, I've still, whether I'm injured or I'm playing, I still, I'm still happy because I get to see the kids or I've, I've, I'll take the eldest to the cinema or, you know what I mean, I'll take my mum out for lunch or me and Fred, I'll go and watch Fred, my mate Fred's game. So all those things don't, don't differ. So I have got some stability to allow me to then, all right, get my head around it, I'm injured. Okay, let's attack the rehab, I'll be back. 
But if I've got nothing here and then I'm not being able to go out on a Saturday and perform, I've got nothing to feel good about. But at the minute, I'm a good friend, good uncle to the kids, good spectator for my mate. I'm shouting, you yeah, know, come on, let's go. So I'm all of them things, you know. Plus, I'm tackling, tackling the cold showers. It's all just all little things. To, they're almost little challenges, which then allows me to be in a good place to attack my rehab. And at the end of the day, I've, it is what it is. With injuries, whether it's like to the head or an injury like on your body like what you've got it's a way that you can kind of overcome it and get rewire your brain to actually perform better so it's ama I think it's amazing that what you're saying about like healing and taking the time to you know get better you you do these things and it's just going to help you no matter what you're doing it will help you just go like whether you're doing exercise whether you're doing art whether you're doing reading or learning or whatever, it's, it's all going to go and help you with your well-being. So it's just amazing, really, that you found ways that you can deal with what you're going through and make that into something positive. No, that's it. No, it's just mine was just I stumbled through trial and error. So and I wouldn't I wouldn't change any any of it. But doing what we're doing today, I'm hoping we could shorten that time frame for other people with different coping mechanisms or things yeah. to do because I've, I'm lucky to be where I am at this age with what I've been through and what I've done. So I just want to maximise that but if we can shorten that for other people and yeah. give them coping mechanisms, it would be brilliant.